for sure. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, there go. <laughs> this is what we keep telling you, but we've been doing this shit for, I don't know how long, what, since 2013, 14? All sorts of BBC cameras and different other stuff on oh. your face, like. The worst one, oh, not the worst one, but the most of, with the camera stuff was uh, election night when, uh, when, when we won and I walked up on the stage um, after having a couple of beers and then I get there and I'm like, I'm just going to do this mad speech, didn't prepare anything and then there was literally like nine, ten different cameras, lights in your face. The lights just, are the worst, mate. And you can't see and, you, and they're, they're just there and, and you, can, you can tell the Germans are like, just watching very carefully what you're going to say mm. the whole way through. So yeah. Yeah, don't worry about the, that. The one you thing know. you're not supposed to cuff, you absolutely cuff with beers. Mm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I definitely cuffed it. Although that one thing you're not supposed to do. Just put that down. That's going to fucking scratch the shit out of that noise. One thing you're not supposed to do is look at the camera when you're talking. Yeah, don't look at the camera. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do it. So Paul Murray told me that. We'll, Don't we'll, look at the camera. Yeah, because we're talking, because it was an interview between us, and then we'd be halfway through, and I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not looking at it. Different, yeah, Good. different styles of interview, I guess. Mm. That Orlando thing, they're like, I'm just going to interview you live in, in about two minutes, went on ESPN. Yeah, mm. no worries. Just in front of 30,000 people. Fuck, <laughs> yeah. I'm prepared. What was that for? Was that the uh, Invictus opening in 2016? Because mm. how many times did you do Invictus? Because you were uh, the captain of the Invictus twice. 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 You, were both, you did too. Yeah, so we were both on the first one, then I came and was a coach on the, on the uh, Orlando one. I got to lift as well, I got to power lift, but... Um, what were you coach for? Power lifting and... What's <laughs> 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 what? No, no. Long, <laughs> long distance. Um, yeah. <laughs> long, yeah, long, slow distance. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Over the hundred though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really, really I, I, I did the hundred too. Terribly. The guy that won the hundred from the States, he beat like the Australian um, national record. This uh, wounded engine and ill uh, person um, from, from the States. I don't know what, where, where he served, what Corey was in. He ran quicker than our professional athletes do uh, oh, in Australia. Sure. Yeah. Well, there's no way we're going to we can't compete with these. With no, You've got to go back to the start, and that's London. Like, hey, yeah. you just want to go over there and try this. And we figured out really quickly, and this is how I see it, Invictus is a, a sign of how broken our rehab system is. The US and UK align their soldiers with airmen, seamen, whatever, align them with almost high-performance centres, Paralympic-type things. Mm. We just come off shifts in... I was in Nauru still. Mm. I was working back here. Like Dad's right? army type. Just yeah. That, that was, was that was your lead up training. Turn up and have a crack. Yeah. I'd just <laughs> yeah. Wait for like. So 2014, he got me on because they couldn't find anyone to do it. Mm. So no one wanted to do it. Everyone thought it was just this nothing thing. Yeah. So I'm like, sure. Rock up. Get over there. Land day one. Prince Harry's there. We went backstage with the Foo Fighters. He just played. They just played with the families. It was a proper. Um, Paralympic, Olympic style event. Yeah, and, yeah. and everyone there uh, from the other countries were athletes who had been training for years. Like, we definitely did not train for <laughs> a day. Uh, we we kind of just went there. What, do you, what, what would you prefer, but Because I reckon that's better. Like, if you're getting dudes who are actual, like, full athletes, is Invictus actually helping them? What, like, and what about all the no, other no. so I, I, millions I, I, of veterans? And I agree, I agree to a point, but there needs to be a tiered system. So you yeah, can't, yeah. that's a tier one event. It should be well, five tiers. Yeah. So the first one you're doing local stuff, then you're doing regional, then you're doing state, then you're doing national, then you're doing international. So they're your five tiers. You can't go from doing nothing or wounded in Janil or something, you know, you're in a bad yeah, place the Brits, and then go like this. Because yeah. what happens when you finish, this. Yeah, because so, otherwise it turns into like the modern day millennial fake hug scenario. It's like mm. you've got dudes who are actually training like forever and competing against due to just finished work, smashed piss, got on a plane, went over there, met Harry, jumped into a concert and then go, I'm going to compete too. But the worst bit is if they're unwell. So yeah, they're still yeah. unwell because they haven't trained or you're going over and you're going to embarrass them because they haven't done anything. Yeah. And you get there and they get fucking wallops yeah, and, yeah. Then get, and then you've got them on a T1 event where you've got Mickey Yule who's 
um, a Paralympian powerlifter who you know travels uh, the globe. Benches over two hundred. Yeah, yeah, like like he's a he's a beast, right? And and there's other people throughout that, but he didn't just wake up one day and went Paralympian. He trained, and I, mm. we don't do it in Australia. We don't have that five tier level because if you have that five tier level, you step people up. And then when you get to the top to tier one, you step people down and you're uh, managing expectations, then you're managing how people come down the other side. What we do is, or what we have been doing is go nothing, 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 tier one, then all the phones are off. Nothing. And it's the problem. Yeah, and then what? Then we're getting people who are trying to, um, you know, hurt themselves, uh, you know, and and things like that. And it's not, we, we don't do it good enough because, because the people that run it aren't us. Same. So you're saying it's the same problem as all of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This this is a this is a real key point in the same issues that happened in that team and how we if we retrospectively could go back and run it are happening in the veteran space today. It's Prince Harry's thing. Oh, I'm I'm a wing commander. I'm whatever. I want the profile. I want to be a manager in this. Oh, have you worked with wounded injured in ill before? No. No, but I'll give it a crack. Mm. Give it a crack though. Yeah. It's Prince Harry's thing, and it's mm. London, and it's, yeah, it's going to yeah, be a big event. And uh, Absolutely rubbish. I, mm. I, I, will, I will say that there are good people that really want to do good for people and help people. Yeah. But the problem is, um, you know, when, when you when you are someone that's wounded in Janil, you have a, a, a the thought of how to help people. Yeah, because it's you, right? So mm. when when I went over and was helping as a coach, I could see me in all everyone there. So I'm like, okay, I know what they're thinking, I know how they're feeling, I know what they're going through. While people um, might be have this great you know, the, the, there are good people there that, that are in the management and leadership. Yeah. But it doesn't work because there's no one there. Um, when we left, for, for as, as, to my knowledge, were like us. So therefore, what are, you, what, are, what are we talking about? Experience? No, we're just making good. Yeah. You know. It doesn't have the integrity, integrity of it. Yeah. Essentially. Because the British Paralympic team was made up, like, all those Brits that were going overseas, like young, fit dudes in the prime of their life, getting like, like becoming amputees or whatever. They pretty much bolstered the British Paralympic team. Like they're now they were that fit because they were in the prime of their life. Mm. These the Brits are good though, right? So yeah. if they're, if, they're, if someone goes over and makes a mistake or fucks up or does something because they have that tiered system, because it's not like we do. We don't just have a tier one. They have a tiered system. If you go over and, and you've you've fucked up on the piss, you've assaulted someone. You know what they do? You're going home. Mm. Cut cut the umbilical cord. We're not keeping you. Uh, over here in this international event, you're going home and you can go get help there because you yeah, don't yeah. put up this shit. So they made it look like it's a proper event you've got yeah. to train for and get well, your head right. There's tears, right? It's tears. A picture yeah, yeah. Of accountability. Yeah, yeah. And when we walked in and Tom and I said they were looking for people for the original one, when you first see the, the US team or the UK team cruise in, it's powerful, it's moving because half of them are, are in wheelchairs, men and women. We mm. hadn't sort of put women out right out the front, I don't think, in terms of combat course. Mm. Female amputees, plenty of wheelchairs, multiple amputees, like, and we're like, we just sort of grab people from here, there, and everywhere, and do your best. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of that, a lot of these guys with those injuries, and girls, sorry, probably are gonna find it hard to be employed full time. You've got to put the injury mm. into context, like, yeah. so sport, is their thing that's their purpose for every day yeah um they're, they're probably not going to fall in it and with it we, we we both and every nation has people with invisible wounds right it's a real thing and it's something that we we need to kind of also embrace but i think that there needs to be employment pathways for people um so i, I met a um she was from the states she had she was a triple amputee so no legs missing one arm um, I think she had like blast injuries or burn injuries and I go, what do you do? And she goes, oh, well, she worked three days a week. Mm. And I said, why? And she goes, because if I don't, I'd kill myself. Yeah, it fucking and good. then I come back here, right? Because there's nothing worse that I've seen than, than, than what I saw uh, with her. I don't think I've ever, I don't think, I've, yeah, I don't think in any gender or any core. And I come back here and I want to, I want to foster that kind of resilience. But how do we foster that resilience? Do we just go, I've been injured, wounded, injured, or whatever it is, good luck. We, or do we create programs that get people into employment? I think we need to put more ownership on people instead of- People need to take more ownership. Yeah. It's like, like, like uh, Tristan's like, no one's fucking helping you. 
you yeah. can help yourself. And then the introspection, like, yeah, people are going to help you, but you can't lean on other people to do it. Have it be a fucking adult and move forward. And help each other, it. right? So, yeah. so we all help each yeah, other. But we all lean on each other. But you've got to take then. some responsibility for your own rehab yeah. or your own fucking mental health. You need to take accountability and, and action. I spoke to a soldier recovery center this week in Brisbane and I'm like, it's your time, like, time to be, you know, they're all a bit sad. They've got their medical discharge dates mm-hmm. and this is where it starts before you're even a veteran, really. You're still in defence. Mm-hmm. And so we're doing talks with the HPC and the biggest thing we want to say for the transition piece is it's not this foreboding, you're transitioning out of defence, your life is fucking over. Mm-hmm. You need to reprogram, like, like neural condition these guys when they get out and girls when they get out and they'll be like, it's not this foreboding, the end of the fucking world, I'm going to sit on a pension and my life's over. It's closing one book on your service, opening the rest of your life, and retraining your brain that you're fine and you're not a fucking victim and you don't just have to sit at home and, and, and get a point system for pension for DVA. Time and a place is the way I put it in perspective for him. Mm-hmm. I'm like, in, there's never been a better time to leave defence. And I think this game is PM's Veteran Employment Awards yep. have made industry almost right that into the first diversity. Mm-hmm. So you, you, you're going to get the bigger contracts if you're sort of inclusive in that way. So there's opportunity, more opportunity than there's ever has yeah. been, whether it's Dani, whether it's Ramatel, whether it's, it doesn't matter what it is, what sector Cause you Because Ramatel got nominated for the PM's. No, the industry award? awards? Industry no, awards. Uh, yeah, industry I, wanted, award. I wanted 12 months extra for it to mature because yeah. I yeah. wasn't. I this isn't tokenistic, so you don't want to. You know, you don't want to be the to- a tokenistic organisation. Exactly. Go, what's Look, yeah. we've got one. You know, we've got a veteran. Look, yep. I'd right. you want you want an organisation that goes. Yeah, the veterans employment awards are great. It's excellent. And I think it's good. Um, we're not ready. We're not. But watching. we do this anyway because mm. they're our people. We bring yeah. our people in because mm. we know that defence service. It's unique. You have def- you have uh, a very different and structured work life, and we want to harness it and bring it into our organisation, which is what they do. I just, I just don't want to like. So Swiss Aid runs the same model. It's just it's people who give a shit about the other people. It's who don't want to fuck it up, mate. Mm. And and by by not having a fully cooked model, you're gonna do it. So let it like don't half bake it. Let it mature. No, yeah. I'm not the RSL, mate. I wanted more to mature, develop properly, have the right people. That people give a shit about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and not be tokenistic. It yeah. can't be, man, because then it becomes like companies get a quota that, like, you got to get four good chicks in this role, you got to get four dudes from these countries, and you got to get four veterans. And as soon as everyone knows that, veteran gets that job and they're like, am I actually just the fucking a bag of shit? I only got this job because I have a, a spot to fill. And they can't. Well, that, that's r- ridiculous. You need to be going, these boys have got skills. They've got skills in X, Y, and Z, and that's why we're putting them into this It's spot. right, person, right, right, job, right? Realize so, that. Yeah. It, it's, it's, and, you know, we, we see it uh, around the place. We're like, oh, you need to get a um, certain amount of people here. You need to get, like you said, and, and that's rubbish. Yeah. And as, as a father, and, and you know, uh, to a daughter, I want her to get a job because she's great at what she does. Yeah. Not because she's a woman. Because she's good at what she does. Yeah. No, not for any other, and it's the same with veterans. I want veterans to get a job because they're good at what they do. Yeah. Now, when people transition out, some of the, some some veterans, I was one of them, Paul was one definitely as well, um, not writing resumes properly. Not understanding it because the person that was telling us how to do it was still, still living in defense, yeah. right? So we didn't get rid of it, right? <laughs> All these it's acronyms it. are really good, they'll understand. Yeah. You can't have a transition program written and delivered by someone who's never transitioned. Never transitioned. Because yeah. like, if you get in the army when you're 17, you don't have to write a fucking resume to get in the army. You just got to turn yeah. up and not <laughs> The fight. greatest oxymoron of them all. Who's running transitions? Nothing. I, I, I love warrant officers, but you are so institutional as you've done 20 <laughs> plus years. <laughs> what are you not And they go, young nigga, this is what will be on the outside. Yeah. How the fuck do you know? <laughs> These are the hurdles you're going to face. Yeah. Fuck yeah. off, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like oh, I'm, I'm, I'm another big lifter. That. So. that question you asked about tokenism, but mm. that's the line in the sand down the veteran community at the moment. I've got people ringing me up going, I've got this skill. I did this before the army. I'm, and, and our program is about, you come in and it's performance based. We'll, okay. we'll build your confidence. At the end of that 12 weeks, the really motivated people have sniffed that opportunity. And there's some we've had to shake hands to them like, sorry, we can't give you a job just because you, you served. Yeah, you've got to. Oh, yeah. the There's got to be more in the way that's all I've got. I've got. I've, got, I've, I've been got in the army. Of phone calls and what are your like skill that, sets? No, no, but I've been in the army. Isn't that what you just need to fill that spot? Well, that can't be it. Even the veteran badge used to be a badge of honor. Like, 
we're talking about the thousand the other night, the thousand yeah, like people used to want to go overseas and like you want everyone wants to be a dysfunctional veteran until it's someone to do dysfunctional vet like and then they go, they think that. it's a badge of honor. <laughs> they go, oh, I should get a job. I knew the way you were going, man. I was oh, like, oh, mate. I'm like, <laughs> I, I, but it, I'll get fucking sick of it. I'm like, it's supposed to be a badge of honor to be a veteran, not this fucking victimhood. I'm a fucking cripple and give me a job because. Yeah, what jobs do you got? Because I'm a veteran. I've, I've received those phone calls. Yeah. And the first thing I do is twist that straight back around. I'm like, oh, tell me what you want to do. What's your skill set? Oh, Cricket. I haven't thought that far. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, but like, they, it's good to have someone like yourself in there because like, some dudes just haven't thought that far ahead mm. and they need guidance and moulding. But if they show that initiative, I can help them plan. Yeah. And, and I had this bloke in the... And I, I kind of, like Tomo said before, I saw us. This young guy was like pretty fit, sort of, you know, still in the army, so clean shaven, like just that sort of army look, 19, 20 years old. He's like, mate, I, I haven't got anything on my on infantry. I'm like... Right, so you'll turn up on time, you'll get a job done, you can work in a team, you're a very trainable person, you've probably done project management with all the weapon systems and all these all things stuff. that you don't even realise. I'm like, there's a real shift in recruiting, like where you don't necessarily have to have the bit of paper at the moment. We'll take if you're keen as mustard and you're gonna turn up and you're gonna find a way to get it done, companies want you. It's not as hard and as bad as people make it. Absolutely. When you start a conversation with me and you're like, what have you got for veterans? Oh, I never would have taken that path and neither, neither would Phil when he got out. Yeah. We, we tried to earn stuff. Like, but it was so much more than, than that. So uh, when I look at life now and, I, and my service is such a massive part of it, but it's the skills I got from there and that post-traumatic growth that made me grow to a better person. Um, to a different person um, is what I look at now and it's all about looking okay what skills do I have that I've, I can harness and bring in and then how do I now grow develop into community into when we work for ESOs um, and I think that it's it's, it's good to, to have the foundation and the base but we're so much more yeah so the, 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 uh, so certain people get out and they can't stop using their titles because uh, they're so connected with what they used to be or who they used to like, and we were saying that they, uh, you're an Australian chat type. Do you end your emails doing that? You're no, like, like 30 <laughs> Australian Thai boxing 30 yeah. kilos ago. Yeah. <laughs> One leg 30? 30 kilos ago. <laughs> <laughs> An extra leg of 40 kilos, right? Yeah. Like, I'm just saying, like, I like, hold on to a bit on Anzac Day and, and, and the who you are, and you, it's molded you as to, and learn, and you. Some of these skill sets are valuable, but mm. you've got to start looking forward and moving on. If you're not looking for a chance, you know, the best word is evolve. And I said to the, we've, we've discussed this, like, he sits in parliament now. Like, he's, he's evolved, he's taken his opportunities, he's run with it, he's picked a path. Like, I think I've done that with defence industry. I know where I'm headed now, probably for the next five years. And it does, it can be difficult. We, like I said, we bring the guys in and all girls in and we go, do you want to try project management? This is what we do that other companies can't do because they just give me full autonomy to run this program. Like, oh yeah, no worries. Makes his next infantry like obviously got some admin skills, got all this other limit, stuff. Limited, limited to none. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't have any. Don't have any. Dude, <laughs> would have cut and start this again. <laughs> Over a four week thing, I'll be like, all right, I'll bring you in. I'm, I'm going to talk to the quality assurance guys. You can go in there. I'm going to talk to this department. You can go in there. We'll help you find your way. Mm. Not just go, oh, I'm stuck in a job I don't like or I don't want and 12 months I'll be looking for something else. Yeah. It's not helpful. No. But it's, it's a chance to evolve, I think. you it's trying to get through to these young guys, and they're all down and depressed. They're stuck in Soldier Recovery Centre. I know that feeling all too well. Like, um, and that had the chance to be something really good, but I think that's a whole other story. But I just the same with you. You, you left? Mm -hmm. Business owner? Yeah, I was a good guy with business. Grew, yeah. grew a business. Um, you know, growing your charity. It, it's... There's not, we're not all, we're not all the same and we bring different things to the party. And I think that what you've done as well is you have a, you, you know, you're a veteran and, um, and it's, it, that's what, yeah, our foundation, but then you've picked an avenue that is your passion. So it's health and wellbeing, whether it's you know, healthy eating, 
So the key thing is health for you. And the mm. key thing is, is healthy mind, healthy body, healthy soul. So then you've picked what's, what's for you, right? Paul's picked for him. You know, he's going up the fence industry. And I think that, you know, and when Anthony gets out, he, he'll find his niche in the charity mm. um, because there's, there's no one I've met that cares for people more than that guy. Um, so I think that when veterans get out and we get kind of pigeonholed onto what you can do or what, you, what skills you have isn't good. What we need is to get the digger, get the airman, you know, get the people from the Navy and go, cut the umbilical cord. What do you want to do? What do you like to do? Mm. How do you want to do this? Don't, my whole thing is, don't just tell me, show me. Don't just yeah. go, I want to be a business owner. Show me how you do it. Yeah, exactly. How do you grow from it? How do you And mate, that's, that's something that we like, even, in, the, in, the, even in the brand, man, like, mm. there's a there's so many ESOs out there now, and like, a lot of them are doing some sick jobs, but so many of them are, like, their, their name, their logo, it's all soldiers and, and something warry. Mm. And like, that's, one of the biggest problems is everybody's, got this like lost identity when they get out. And if we're just trying to say, hey, just really just cling hard on your old one, mm. keep signing all your letters with retired X rank Johnny Smith and keep telling everyone that you used to be in the army instead of what instead of going, I'm working towards this, they go, Who are you and what do you do? You're like, oh, I'm Johnny Smith and I used to be in the army. That's it. If we keep linking people back to that, you're fucked. Yeah. You gotta you gotta have find a new purpose by looking forward. And that's why like in this brand, it can't be worry. And it's gotta be something that's completely separated from, from military altogether. Even though we are like a, a, a ESO and we are looking to help veterans, it's gotta be the, the identity of the, the company has to be separated. But there's from. also there, and like so we're combat guys, right? So so we 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 we're combat dudes. And we do things that. differently. No, you know, you, 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 can, you can because, because I'm finished. I'm finished. <laughs> you say whatever the fuck you want to this podcast. <laughs> so, no, because, because we're, co- we're, we're combat guys and we'll sit here and we'll talk about warrior stuff and we, you know, get all involved in, in what we've done and, you know, and, and our friends and, um, you know, from all around uh, different levels of, of defence. But you can't pigeonhole other cause other jobs because whilst we're a tight knit so is the clerks they're tight yeah, you know and, and what's what's their injuries um that they've had uh, and what we've what we've got they're, they're different they're not the same but they're not less important so mm. uh, if someone had is mentally unwell it doesn't matter what where they sit in the in the the scheme of uh their employment they should still be able to see themselves in your brand yeah, not a worry yeah. one just because it's what Switzerland is, yeah. mate. It's so, neutral ground. So, so while we're all the same, and that's great because we all get along, right? It's all it's we, we all have done the same job, but there's different segments within uh, the defence force, and your brand opens the door for everyone to be a part of everything, not just you're just that, you're just that. Mm. It's that integration, inclusion, and then development, and we learn from each other. Yeah, like my admin was rubbish, where Clark's was good, you know, things yeah. like that. Yeah, some of those people are the best ones to work with. Yeah, yeah. Because they want that that chance to to move forward, and we've had this mm. through our, our program. And some of our own people are just rubbish, mate. Yeah. Let's it's, and I think this is an issue that goes right up to the top of DBA, like. And it, it, unless we're going to fix a lot of these problems, you need to have all the factual information, and somehow it's getting messed up and lost. And I think sometimes. In the combat cause, it's an easy excuse. I had, I had, to throw I had incorrect information given the other day, like, uh, you know, be really careful when you get out because you can't get it, you know, you know, if you go down, if you go down the mm-hmm. gold card, white card mm-hmm. path, um, you can only work 10 hours a week or you lose everything. And I was like, that's different than what I heard, got straight on the blow out of YouTube. And if I didn't have you two, I'm like, well, I'm just gonna. And the whole bad thing is, right, is you don't you don't transition out of defence and go, I want to get a gold card or a white. Everyone gets a, you can get a white card now. You know, normal ability healthcare and, and some good stuff there. But that's not what people Both think, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, but what people think is they're gonna put in, they, for injuries that you've sustained within defence, you put in a claim to the Department of Veterans Affairs and with all your uh, your med docs. Um, yeah, but you're not sitting there going, I'm getting out on a certain route. I'm getting out uh, totally permanent impaired or 
you know, through the special ed disability pension or looking for a gold card. You, you get out and you, you, you do the right thing and you put your claims in and then you get assessed and then it comes back. So it's yeah. the other way. It's yeah. not, oh, I want to get out. Oh, but if you get out and try for a gold card, you can't do this. One, rubbish. Shouldn't be getting top people. Shouldn't be telling people that. Two, that's not what people get out with. People get out and go, oh, I'm going to put my claims in because I've been injured in defense to make sure I'm covered throughout my life because when I'm picking up my kids, I don't want my back to, to, to blow out because I've got lumbar spondylosis or something. Or I'm missing my right leg. You know, the, you know, Paul's in definitely entitled to, to have his claims accepted through the department because service related, right? If it's service related, you do that, and then they come back and then you've been assessed and, and then you get uh, that levels of cards. I can't believe there's kids that are still, in what, even one or other, like, I can't, I said, go to DBMA, put your claim. There's one kid, is, he broke his fucking, he broke his hip mm. uh, and like horrible uh, impact driven accident. I can't mm. remember what, what, where it was. And he's like, it was crippled, mate. And he's like, I said, make sure you get your claims done through DBA. So before you get out, because that's where part of the big system is and where the friction point is, mm. guys get out, they don't have a job quite lined up, they're expecting a safety net. And you're like, DBA is fantastic, man. You gotta give these guys some leads on because there's some there's some clogging the system at the moment, mate. Yeah, and yeah. you know, we need it. The DBA does need to do better. Yeah. Yeah, not been, um, Chester, Minister Chester and I were spoken about it, Liz Costa and I have spoken about it. DBA does need to do better. It does. But it, it's taking its time um, because I hate uh, when people put in a claim and then they call me and they're like, it's been this long or... It's been eight days, mate. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> they, people not, oh, they do, but not, not that much, not with the wall. Not with that tail ball. You know, DBA. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's not a fucking bell. Does anyone want to be? Nah, yeah, maybe. please. Yes, please. But DBA does need to, you know, the, the ship's turning, right? So uh, the legislation is quite complex. The computers and the IT weren't talking to each other. Mm-hmm. Everything bad's happening. People still putting claims in. You need to square that shit away. You need to get the right people in the right jobs uh, to, to move it uh, to its part. You know, you've got the first ever commission. Because I think the biggest friction point was advocates. They're all, so I, I, okay, from my perspective, I, I saw that there was a big, um, I don't want to make this about DBA, blah, blah, mm. but but the, there was there was different levels. There's paid advocates, there was unpaid, and there was guys that just, for, for all mm. intents and purposes, were trying to do a real good job, mm. but they're just giving people the wrong advice. So there's two, there's two, yeah, there's two things with that one. Uh, the first ever commissioner for the Department of Veterans Affairs is Don Specs. He's for, former he's RSM good. Um, of the army. He's the RSM, like, he, he's great, like, great. He will see diggers in a crowd. He will see, uh, you know, because we need to understand that the majority of claims that are put in are from the lowest denominator, which is the largest denominator of wounded engineer, the enlisted. So he will, he goes out of his way to go straight to the enlisted and go, how can we help, how can we do better? And doesn't just listen, he takes notes. If you see, if you see a commissioner or any senior bureaucrat or a politician pull out a notepad and pen, you know you're in the right company because it means they're gonna do something. Yep. Um, and then the second fold um, of that around advocates is a lot are unpaid. Only certain ones who are sell are paid and they're paid not very well. You should pay your advocates. One, accountability for work. Two, you need to be able to have a more uh, diverse age within advocates. You need people that are younger, middle, older, whatever you want to, different genders, it's fine. Like, you need everyone. You can't just have uh, people that have uh, TPI'd through um, Vietnam, um, who, you know, sit there and they're like, okay, this is how we're gonna do it. We need, you need that balance of, of everyone through every different conflict or no conflict to make it. And they need to, they need to have a niche. At the moment, you get an advocate, and I, I haven't done the training, but they go and get trained, and it's, it's the analogy is like getting a lawyer and going, you need to be covered off. Yes, they will learn the, the, the law when they go to uni, but then they specialize in a niche, and that dude does corporate law, and that one chases ambulances, and that one does whatever he does, but they're all, they're niche, so they're experts in their own field, right? Yeah. And and at the moment, advocates are supposed to cover everything from World War Two to the bloke that got out yesterday, and that is fucking bullshit, because there's not yeah. a chance they know all the- Different legislation, Exactly. Right? So, but the, so the ATDP, um, it, which is the what Stevie has brought in, where you go there and you get trained formula, you, you get a, a cert for or a diploma, depending on what level you're at. 
I think it's great because that now that's a qualification accountability where uh, previously you do a tip course, which is fine, tip courses are fine, but you do it for a day, two days, high five, walk out, next thing you know, you're just running, um, you know, the claims of people. And there needs to be accountability, but there also needs to be paid yeah. because when people get out or they've been out for a while and they're like, you know what, I really want to give back on a hell, you shouldn't go, well, I expect you to volunteer to do it. Because with volunteer, um, you know, in, in the newer, in newer uh, day and age, volunteer mentality, you get volunteer outcomes, which aren't always the best. And then you're like, ah, oh, you know, I'm just doing it as a hobby, it's a good thing. And you need an advocate that can understand legislation, like you said. Because when I first put um, claims in from when I was injured overseas, I got on a Friday. So I opened it on a Friday. I didn't understand what they were talking about. Got on a bender to the next Friday. Had all these calls from the advocate, and they're like, "Oh no, you 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 actually uh, were accepted, and it's gone through, and in the term you won, which isn't really how it should be viewed, but you won." And I was like, "Wow, I just fucked up like seven days, like real bad." Because I thought I was. Well, I don't know where I've been, kind of seven pretty days. Pretty sure I gave. I didn't win. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's, there's a given. Yeah. Like, so it's not a win scenario, but. I didn't understand legislation that at the time. Um, my advocate didn't go to him, went to me. Like these things that, as a 22-year-old, 23-year-old, who's still going through, you know, brain injuries, still you know, going through all, all the ups and downs. I was like, well, my life's fucked. I can't. I don't know what I'm ever going to do again. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Because that process takes a piece of time, right? And yeah. And you're working with you know Chester and. It's going on. There needs to be reform, and then you can't have six. It's not going to be a paper-based system. So the system, yeah. no successful business these days does run a paper-based system. Yeah. Uh, so mate, army needs to be in that respect. Yeah. Well, I think you missed you skipped a <laughs> step. So when you and I, and we got all our sort of stuff done post MRTF two, mm. pretty much together. Mm. It, it's the mentality of the people. Yep, I'm going to get this. I'm content with this. Neither of us fucking were. Like, I, you know what I want to do? DBA's messed us around a little bit. I want to set my life up so that I'm not wholly and solely dependent on this system. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's so a fucking it's suicide sentence. If, like, if, you, if you go out and you yeah. get a fucking gold card and a pension, it's a suicide sentence. Statistically, within 10 years, you'll fucking kill yourself. So you don't have to have a pension if you have a gold card, though, right? So yeah. it's, it's, a, um, it's a level of permanent impairment points. Yeah. Um, and then there's Comsupra, then there's DBA, and then, you know, it, it's very complex. And this is the problem that I think with when people get out, they're like, oh, this should be real easy, I'll just do this. Like, I go see my clerk, and then they do this, and I'm all whatnot. And it's fucking not, it's hard. But I can tell you that it means a lot to the government um, to get it right, because ScoMo, uh, when, uh, two weeks ago, less than two weeks ago, um, called a meeting with all the heads. We all sat in a room, and he goes, all right, what are we doing? And then everyone starts talking this. No, 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 no. What about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? Oh, okay, find the answers out. Come back to me. We're yeah. not. We're not here to fuck around. You know the the amount of funerals that we've all been to. Is bullshit. I'm tired of burying people. Absolutely sick of it, mate. Say, mate. And you know, not seeing your mates anymore, knowing that they they were unwell and you couldn't help them. Absolutely pains me to death. And Scarra was here on Anzac Day, and we'll together the next day. Carrie died on Anzac Day. Yep. So he was with me when, yep. when I found out. When you called me, I told the boss. Then he came back uh, just after the election. Tristan died from suicide. He's like, how's it been? I said, not fucking well. This is what's going on. Yep. He's like, okay. Pulls his phone out, goes, what do we need to do? Bam, makes a call. Yep, we're doing this. And then we had not, not just bureaucrats, not just senior people of the Department of Defence sitting there, you got me, you got Andrew Hasty, you got people that rolled the sleeves up and they've like have got on the job and sit there and go, fucking what about this? How do we work together though? It's not us and that. So this is the thing, together. this was the thing that um uh who was the, the minister that came up with you? Just just uh, uh, assistant minister? Just gone? Oh, Minister Health, look out. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, was like, Minister of Homelessness. They were super excited minister. to see you up there, and then yeah. his staff was like, mm. you, you're one of the guys that can actually, like that bipartisan support to get this done. You and Hasty and that, mm. the guys were like, okay, this, is a, this isn't just a, a red thing or a blue thing or a fucking liberal Labour. It is us a thing, yeah. it is a us thing and an Australian thing, and we're gonna like go forward with this. Yeah. I'm jumping on this segue, mate. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Yeah, go. This, this was Luke's idea the other night, and he'll back it, because it was a good idea. And, 
Is this where I go get a beer or? Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> that's how we can edit it out. So we're doing this stomp around, around Australia next year, yep. um, which we haven't really publicised yet, but we're okay. slowly getting it out there. Um, which I'm sure the government and DBA is going to throw a whole bunch of money at. It's <laughs> a fantastic one. No, no, but the, 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 the audio that Luke came up with was <laughs> was to go through you and get it to both sides of, of Parliament and go, yep. this is something that all, all politicians would yep. get on board with, whether it be to to just spruik it or, or come and walk with us, because yep. um, politicians love walking when there's cameras on, and just <laughs> just, just, like, just any, anything you can to support it. <laughs> yep. And I'm like, that's wicked, because... Beforehand, if I was going to go to get any politicians on, I would just come to you and say, hey, do you want to come do something to stop with this? <laughs> um, but the, to get both, because this is not a, a political, like, it's, this shouldn't be politicised. This is both sides of the parliament. Should we going, hey, this is a veteran thing. Let's get on board with it. So, so uh, Luke Gosling, um, he is a veteran. Um, he's in Darwin, Solomon. Uh, so, the lecturer of Solomon. Uh, he's, he's on Labor. He's, he's a Labor guy. We get along like, very well. We both uh, co-chair the Friends of Veterans group, so we we speak. Good guy, I'd, I'd catch up with him, um, and he's someone that I'll bring this to and go. You know what? Get all you because. Uh, so how it kind of works is uh, there's certain issues that are bipartisan. Well, they should be, but they still get politicised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it should be bipartisan. Um, I'll tell him to rally his side. I'll get on my side. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll get uh, I'll talk to the crossbench and then the Senate. Because there's two, there's a few things that polis hate. They hate um, getting, you know, shamed in the media for not doing something, reputation damage, uh, and not being involved in good things. Yeah. They absolutely hate those two. So w- with with their side, I'll shame them into doing it. <laughs> with my side, of course, I'll be involved. Yeah. As, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But we've got, you know, we've got the Senate as well. We've got a lot of people that w- would get involved. It's just about how it works. You've also got Tony Abbott, um, yeah. you, know, you know, TA. He'll, he'll be, he'll want to be involved. Yeah, we're actually, actually we're actually trying to do a, um, a promo with Budgie Smuggler, and that's something we've got to get that big Tony Abbott on board with. Down yeah. at the Surf Club, I think he's at Manly, isn't he? Yeah, he's I think like actually Budgie Smuggler's from Manly. Yeah, exactly. that's what we're, we're talking going. political stuff, but and we, me and you have this conversation on. We'll see if I deny it. <coughs> ten years, uh, <laughs> ten years in July, and then um, is he the deputy labour minister? Just copied and pasted a Townsville Bulletin article around Brad Carr's suicide, and this was leading to Benny's ten year anniversary of when this happened and when Benny died. And I was I was having an off week, and I talked to Tom a fair bit, and the politicians are just, oh, the Bulletin wrote this story, it must be factual. I started writing it. Which then I had to have a conversation with a mother that lost her son that stuff wasn't factual and it just made a mess of the whole thing. Like, yeah. how are we ever going to sort this space so out? So, as a deputy opposition leader, if you've got the deputy opposition leader, and I'm kind of sick of mine and Ben's name getting thrown around for every yeah. time someone goes off the rails, like, leave it alone, to be fair. Like, without all the factual information, I'm still kind of cranky at it that someone at that level in politics can just go, that must be fact. I'm gonna roll. I think you like, it's kind of it's kind of easy to do because there's a nominal fucking role, and you say to yourself like the army knows when they issue you an extra cup scanning, yeah. but they can't tell you which 38 dudes were involved in an incident where we lost an Australian soldier. So, in the so with, with this one though, and um, before, you know, not to, and I definitely don't want to get political with this. Um, I called his office. You know, so he's the deputy leader of the Labor Party. I called his office. I spoke. I spoke to his staff. They said, yep, they'll call me, happy to call Paul, and heard nothing ever from that. I could have absolutely kicked the shit out of him up and down the street in the media. Oh, easy. The media would have l- l- lapped it up. It was factually incorrect. It was uh, so far incorrect that you could go, all oh, this is just a lie. Uh, and, but I, I wanted to go, you know, and I, and I spoke to Paul, you know, for you, is it the 10 year anniversary? Of when Ben was killed and he lost his leg, so I didn't want to make uh, you know put this in the media and get on Skyway and be like, look at what Labor's doing, this is rubbish. Mm. I'd much rather just pick the phone up and go, hey, you've made a massive fuck up, it's wrong. You might not like my side of politics. You should call me as the only wounded veteran in Parliament. Yeah. You should call me when you want to shoot off like that, especially about uh, a person that has died who is from the same battalion as me. Yeah. Um, and then I can put you in touch with the right people and I won't, 
I won't politicise it. No, nah, didn't call me back, wouldn't have a bar of it. Now when I see him in the, in the house, he doesn't even look at me. Well, He's man. a coward. <laughs> so, and this is the thing, so I want to get into this, and, I, and I, I'm not saying, like, uh, so you just become, you were elected the uh, member for Herbert? Yep. And uh, a lot of stuff while you were running, um, you would just get out and talk to people mm. while you were running. Yep. And it's this sort of stuff that they all responded to was, you are fucking you. Mm. Like, there's no bullshit. No. You get the person on the camera that's talking to people and the guy at the pub that's going there mm. and the guy that's trying to be honest and genuine with veterans' issues. Mm. So take them through that and being able to sit down with you in this setting mm. uh, is something that we want to keep doing like more yeah, and more. Sure. And get the, it's the person behind it all. And people, I think people yeah. want to see that. And all the one hour lads, they, they absolutely fucking love you, mate. And all, and all elaborate were in and, and electric, mate. When you were getting, <laughs> when you would, um, what do they call it? When you get initially put up to run? To, oh, when I became the candidate. Candidate, yeah. Yeah, electrified it, but yeah. Um, the thing with all of it was, and, and I spoke I spoke with both of about it, I never sat there and I never wanted to say, you should vote for me. No, you should find out who I am. And if my values are the same as yours, then if I'm the best person that you think can do well in this community, then you vote. It's a mm. democratic right. And I absolutely hate how um, veterans issues get used as a political football. You know, it's... Uh, who can get the photo of the most, you know, veterans, who can say they're employing the most veterans to get kudos everywhere. It's absolute bullshit. We get used really poorly. And I, I saw in Townsville um, inaction. I, didn't, I don't see, or I didn't see at the time of future. I saw my daughter would grow and leave to the southeast corner. I didn't see jobs, no cranes in the sky, no projects, all these things. And I actually went to the, uh, the, the, the member at the time and said, how can I help? You know, let's do this, let's do that. They fobbed me off. You know, it's good to have a veteran get a photo, but then we'll just pat you on the head and put yeah, you in the corner. Yeah, you don't want to listen to it. Fuck you, this yeah, is bullshit. I'll show you how to do yeah, this. Go back to the business. And you fucking fight. Yeah, yeah. And, and we do it. We love them, dude. I love a good fight. Love, love, love a good fight. Right? So take take me through it, man. So just for, I know everyone else, like where, I, I want to talk to you, and I want to get, your whole story, if you want to, yeah, want to have to do that. Story time. But I just, I want to do story time, yeah. and I want to hear. Because let's be honest, it's your yeah. fucking story time. This thing's yeah, going, out, right this going out to millions of people, mate, and most of them don't know the boys. Yeah, one day it will. Where where Tomo was at, but and this is the case in point. He's near the federal member for Herbert. I should be, you know, when I'm working in the defence industry, you should be calling him his. You know. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, we're mates. And he handled that. He knew I was having an off week. I probably answered my phone to two people that week, him and, and maybe you. Like, um, and he could have, you could have used that situation for your own political gain. Mm. And that's the difference between him yeah. and some of these other leaders. And I'm calling Peters because oh, they go Gladly, it's probably the first time I've sort of been emotional for, for ages. I normally keep myself busy to the point where that doesn't affect me. But a few people knew I was having a pretty shitty week and the way he handled that was more like a mate rather than I can use this to my advantage yeah. politically. And he could have, oh, he could have smashed I'll make the media. Yeah. Because it's not factual. And DBA is looking at, at claims that come out of this and like, oh, he, his mum said he was there. His missus wants a widow's pension and this person wants this and like, get the facts. Oh, yeah, you're, you're, stepping, you're stepping on people's feelings that were fucking there that day. Mm. And the families, you know, you know, it's not fair on, it's not fair on Ben's family. Yeah, every time she fucking another another veteran suicide, she's like, bang, Ben. Oh, that's his. You know, he, oh, he can't get over it because Ben died. He wasn't fucked. Like, you're aware. Some blokes have got class A pensions, and they're what, they're in Bravo Company. They weren't even in the country yet. Mm. And if people, and even Come if on, people yeah. were there, um, I still, I still don't think, I don't think it's right to to blame um, anyone. Or you know, especially Ben or his family, because every day they read that in the paper, it brings they? it up again and again so and again. Well. And they're lovely people. His family doesn't look at that. Job the, the keeping his memory alive. Yeah. Without, they don't yeah. push for anything. They, they don't want a royal commission, which will publicly state. Neither do I. It's people. There's four people. There's five people, people in this room that will back that. But I, 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 I back that up. His family. 
do such a good job of just being who they are, remembering him without. It's not fair to them that um, his name gets tossed up because someone else has gone off the rails a little bit. Yeah, and, and someone's got to, media's got to be held accountable for some of this shit. Like they can't, and they're not not just with with you and Benny. Like even with Birdie, man. Like Tom I knows how fucking angry I get every time something comes up with Bex and Suicide. Birdie gets bring brought into it. Who do they go to for an interview? His ex ex girlfriend who's fucking telling lies through her teeth, who left a year and a half before he killed himself. Let's call a spade a spade. Relationship breakdowns drive most, that's like the, the, the straw that breaks the camel's back. And that fucked Birdie up. Yeah? I mean, it, the, it, the room, it, it feels like the room yeah. just dropped, but yeah. this shit's true. And I'm like, every time an article came out where someone interviewed her, I got straight on the phone and started emailing like editors of newspapers and shit, and started getting apologies going not I didn't give a fuck about an apology I was just like just just be aware of it now so please don't don't interview that person again and it just keeps happening I'm like someone's got to get these fucking journalists to be accountable for what they're doing and go you've got to get your story straight before you just start throwing dead dudes fucking names before under the bus a deputy opposition leader just starts printing it as gospel and yeah. it's not that's case yeah. in point like but I agree a hundred percent, and I I can tell you exactly when Birdie started to go downhill. Yeah. Because it was when he um, Maru started downsizing. Maru was the worst, one of the worst jobs in the world. Yeah. We were paid well, but and we were all together, so everyone had turned up. Back to shared together. suffering. So, yeah. Yeah. Job, <laughs> job <laughs> shit, but you love your mates. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And I think I had a speaking job in Melbourne after my book got done in must have been 2015 and I look up and yeah Birdie's there and he'd already been let go from the room he's like he yeah, caught three trains to get across there and I, I'm always kicking myself now because I'm like now I look back at it I'm like you wanted to talk to me you wanted to but he just does a prayer bloke which is yeah crazy. I mean but so, so your response then I had the same response all the boys did it's regret like as soon as you find out one of the boys said it's like what could I have done to stop that and this person that they keep going to interview never talks about regrets. She's like, who else can I blame? And how can I launch my own career off the back of this publicity? Writing books or whatever the fuck she's doing. I'm gonna stop being grumpy in about 30 seconds. But <laughs> that's, that's the one thing in the media, man, that if, if I see that face come up again, I don't know what I'm gonna do. This is why Royal Commission is super angry. Is a bad idea. It's gonna be people that aren't us. Um, Traditionally, a Royal Commission costs, what, in excess of $100 million? Yeah. yeah. It'll slow the process down for what, tied up in courts for 24 to 30, two to three years. But, you know, by the time they have recommendations and, and actually, mm. we know what the issues are, but no one puts us at the table. So not I've just got someone who's... In ex- to, that's you know, it. If you're Get a the boys at the table. Boys and sorry, what do you know about boys. looking left and right and, and getting blown up and bits missing and how your mates responded from that? There's plenty of lived experience in Australia, and we just don't get involved. Like the what was the what was the one that the, the, people are, are trying to uh, help? I don't know, put them on a pedestal or say sorry or whatever it is. Like uh, priority seating on fucking airlines. What veteran on the planet? <laughs> no one wants did they go? That how do we say thank you for your service? You're like you don't. We just did it because we wanted to do it. I don't need a priority fucking board. But that's. <laughs> that's one piece uh, that, do I need priority uh, boy so here's a story for you like that's one piece of a bigger culture so I did the the second Invictus Games trip and they made me captain I think only because Curtis had a Paralympic issue he was busy yeah he was busy <laughs> 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 Deep, Deep <four> captain <laughs> he's more articulate he's better yeah, looking he and he's missing next to him Curtis is <laughs> oh, he's yeah, got, he's, a man he's, he's a trifecta yeah. oh. <laughs> that's face time and I joked I joked about that with him but we tried to grab one piece of the American culture which is when you go over there you know they have the USOs you can go and get free food and stuff at the airports if you've served um, yeah I did a three day trip before the game started a couple of months earlier. Um, did a lot of media and all that. All the cap- few captains from other teams were there. I'm sitting at Orlando Airport before we fly out and I'm just going, I'm um, just about to pay the bill. And a guy comes up and goes, Oh, your bill's been paid for. What are you talking about? 
Come from Townsville, you're more likely to have rocks thrown at you, boy. <laughs> Uni students for being a veteran and fucking lefties, eh? <laughs> Stop the darn it. <laughs> you're more likely to have rocks thrown at you. And I, I, was, I was literally blown away. I'm just sitting there mourning my own business, having my breakfast, and they're like, nah, someone saw that you're part of the Invictus game scene and they've paid your bill. That's big. And then next minute, if you're a veteran, you can board first. We've tried to take one piece of their overall culture. I'm like, oh yeah, we'll just take that one thing and implement it here and it'll be great. Yeah. But I see, see, I, 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 I see that as, it's, it's just, it's more that there's people out there that want to do the right thing, but they've got no idea how. And they come up with their own ideas. Same as the problem that we've got with, with like, DBA and, and, and finding solutions is, Instead of asking the people, what do you want or what do you need? They just go, oh, look, this idea, this will probably work. We're gonna roll this out straight away. So the one thing, and with all you this, know, the one know. thing I, I, I kind of, I liked, I liked the thought that an airline would go, if you've served, we'd like you to, to use our language. We'd like you to come in, uh, do your work, relax. You know, the, the kind of, yeah. this is our way of saying thank you for your service because we, we can't do, you know, it's not like, a, like other places where they can yeah. bump you up. But, it, it, but they, they can open the door and say, come into the lounge if you'd like. You don't have to. If you don't want to board priority, don't fucking board priority. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to. Like, so I've been to, and I knew everyone kicked off real hard, real quick. And because, and then once the, the kind of negative thing starts, like what we do, yeah, we'll, we'll jump on it, or, or, on it, and then next thing you know, it's blowing up. I think that if, if an airline went, we can't give you free flights, and no, you know, yeah, sure they, um, but if you'd like to use our lounge, if you the serve. The problem with that, mate, yeah. is that you get free grog in the lounge, and they'll go bankrupt in a week if they let <laughs> <laughs> no, They can't have the 1,000 assistance dogs that go through this. <laughs> <laughs> Every veteran trying to claim a DVA pension at the moment. <laughs> I'm sorry you that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a mic drop. So, <laughs> so while, while I'm not going to comment on that, because uh, assistance dogs do do a good job. But, uh, <laughs> so, take, so I want to know. So I want to know, and everyone else that's sitting there that, that don't know Philip Thompson. Yep. OAM MP. Yeah. Yep. I think I've got all your posts. Yep. Yeah. Can we do? Can we do you? Sure. As a digger. Yep. Uh, get back from Afghan. Yep. Or point of incident to the job choices and the growth you went through and sure and why the fuck would you get into politics because <laughs> that looks fucking like hard work yeah oh, it's, it, the work's fine because you work you, you work hard in your job it's you're a target for everyone now and yeah. you're in the crosshairs of every single person and the top the, the days are done where if someone goes like like they have during my campaign, you're a fuckweed, or I'm going to come to your house and punch the fuck out of you, which happened in my campaign. People threaten me, my family, and my switch in my head goes, really? Okay, I'm right here. If you 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 want to threaten me, in, or on the internet, and yep. you know these people come up to you then in public, my you as tough on the internet they are in real life. Like I'm right here. I now can't, and I, nor should I, put it in that context. But it's about how. Do I then talk with these people about why they're so fucking angry? People hate politicians. I went to an event last night and he goes, this guy comes to me and says, I fucking hate politicians. I said, why? Yeah, that's good, mate. I'm not a politician. Yeah. But I said, You're not like, but, but why? Like, oh, they make bullshit laws. Like, which ones? Um, nah, you guys are all corrupt. Like, who? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I saw a clickbait on the internet. Fucking tell me. I didn't read it. But... Yeah. Or someone has a crack at, at Peter Dutton. And they're like, oh, Dutton, I'm like, mate, Peter Dutton is the only person in this country, in politics, that can do his job. And uh, <laughs> I'll tell you the story about it. We went to breakfast. Uh, we were doing a media op here uh, during the campaign, during the, the pre-pop. He was in, in his seat, get up, and all those absolute assholes of people were just throwing millions of dollars in there trying to DC him. But he came to town to him. Came up. Uh, we went to breakfast, and it was my must, uh, Jenna and I uh, and him, finished what he was eating, grabbed his plate, my plate, and our coffees, and took to the kitchen. There was no media there. There was no, he doesn't win any votes here. Nothing like that. He's a great person, an absolutely great person, and so genuine. But he, need, he knows when he needs to be 
the person that makes the decisions. Yeah. And he knows when when it's time to to, to people give him people give him stick, but man, he's such a good guy. No one could do his job. Make that hard decision all the time, every time. And then when it gets made, stand in front of the media and go, this is why. And then everything else just explodes around. And then, <laughs> and then I went on a, um, uh, I was doing an interview, a debate, I was doing a live debate. And he goes, oh, what, what do you want me to do? I said, oh, just go to pre-poll and hand out for me. He sat on pre-poll for an hour, handing out how to vote for me. While I was doing it, the debate. Just such a genuine, nice person. Does does not um, nothing phases him, uh, which is I, it, he's, you know it's it's quite remarkable because it it phases anyone the amount of shit that um, the left throw at him for no factual reason it's it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, but there was like people that were coming up here at service stations and like yeah I spat my window got spat on at the service station and someone pulled up the um, recorder started recording because I want to know the the difference between you go overseas and you're like okay I'm serving my country whatever. Your, your intrinsic motivation. There's always a larger part of doing you doing it a little bit there. Some people more than others, but there's always a little bit of doing your bit for your country and all that sort of stuff. And you go from that, and you're like, one day I could possibly go overseas and die for these people. Ooh, nearly said it. C <laughs> 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 <That> word. <laughs> and then you get back, and you're like, I want to run for politics because I want to make a difference. I'm assuming it wasn't because. But there really, was so much. It wasn't because you're really right. spending time with your wife and kids. <laughs> <laughs> there was so much in between. This so. Um, the protesters that protest and lock themselves on the fences and spit on my car who aren't from here because those people are gone now they're not they're not from this now um the, the blowings that the the, you know, the left bring up um the so they, they can do that on the back of the freedoms that people who've served overseas have done for them yeah so they can protest and have a democratic right to protest sometimes i don't agree with the way they do it uh, because of on the back of of veterans and people that sort of stuff. Uh, I, I don't like the way they do it. I don't like my daughter being yelled at. Um, and none of these people are from here. Because I found out some of these who these people were uh, and they're not from here. They're from down south. So the, the people of towns were great. There, there's a couple, like anywhere, there's people that vote in whichever way and that's fine. There's people that are pretty extreme, locking themselves to fences, saying that Danny shouldn't go ahead. You know, but uh, I don't agree with that whatsoever. The punishing a business for doing, wanting to, to employ people and do a job. Come protest my place, that's fine. Let business do their job. Uh, but when I got, so October 19, uh, on a dismounted patrol, I got blown up by an ID, um, which kind of changed. Because you were banging around, sorry, you were banging around Marshall, hey. You were, I'm gonna, oh, uh, Cutis, team, yeah, I was you team, team, one, team, one? team one. Team one and Cutis. Cutis. So uh, team one was split between Cutis and Newman. And uh, I was cutest, and we were walking back. Um, and whatever reason, uh, the A and A decided to go the same way we went there, the same way back. Uh, ID went off, uh, hurt me, and then well, I would have died if I wasn't. You know, so everyone knows I'm not very tall, including the, the including the the page that trolls me, <laughs> <laughs> who who like to keep commenting on it. And uh, I offer that cow at any time he wants to come on a debate or a, a podcast with me. <laughs> uh, he should. Uh, so I'm I offered a debate also. <laughs> <laughs> I think your debate was a bit different. Um, but, but I couldn't walk across the aqueduct, and you know the aqueduct is the the irrigation system in third world countries. Um, I couldn't just jump across it. You know, I've got the, the SR25, my, my pack on, you know, 66. I think I, I was carrying one back gun as well. Um, so I had to rock forward to rock back. As I rocked forward, and as I went back, the ID went off. Um, kind of threw me back. The, the thing that never gets reported, and it should, is my medic, who was on the other side of the blast. So a blast has just gone off. You got two 82 Russian, um, uh, two 82 millimeter Russian mortars that's just blown. They, they, were, they were really pretty deep to, to, to the blast go kind of up and out. Um, it threw me back. So this has gone off this, you know, big plume, can't see anything. I couldn't see anything. My ears are ringing, couldn't see anything. Um, couldn't see out my eyes because my, my glasses, my goggles are all um, messed up. And here comes running through the blast site, Tom Howe, my medic, jumps through where I've just been blown up. And we all know what happens is there's other IDs around normally. Yeah. Yeah, jumps through, grabs me and reefs me back and starts going through. He's a hero, right? Like he put, he 
knowing the uh, the Taliban's kind of tactics would be to plant more or IEDs secondary around, IEDs. secondary IEDs, or complex ambush, or anything. And he didn't sit and wait and go, oh shit, we should just assess this and then we'll, we'll, which is probably what he should have done. He jumped through the blast site and pulled me back to check me and make sure it was all right. Uh, and I think that he did you know, a great job and no one, no one kind of, in all my stories and uh, that I've done, he all, it, it kind of always gets missed or left out. Um, That's the first time I heard that bit. Yeah. How is it? He's the man. Like, otherwise I would have just been laying there yeah. on my back wondering, you know, because the first thing that goes through your head when you, you don't really know what's going on is this is the day you die. Mm. You don't know what's happened. You know you're laying on your back or you know that something bad's happened. And that, that's kind of what was going through my head is the ringing and the piercing ring and not being able to see and having shit in my fucking Oakleys is I'm going to die. I'm 21. I'm going to die. And having Tom jump through a blast saw to, to pull me out, uh, I think is something that's uh, truly amazing. I, was, I, I got met back, brought back to Australia, went through the highs and lows and turbulence of, so I had a brain injury, can't hear in my right ear, doctors going, oh, you know, you've got PTSD, you can never work again, sit on your pension, you'll be fine. 21, it's a terrible fucking thing to say, right? Because you're like, well, what am I gonna do? Just drink piss and, you know, what do you do? Um, and kind of went through that roller coaster from probably nearly three years from when I got back, or two years from when I got back, before I started to find my normal. Maybe extended by me for about 12 months, but that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a. The, <laughs> you, you were undoing all the good work, I would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like anything, you were doing good work. Um, <laughs> we shared some medication. We did, we did. Um, but we went, we, we, like when we were back when everyone was overseas, because your family, and because of my brain injury, I lost uh, a lot of my memory. Uh, and but because we were wounded together, we were like, we just went through it together. So, you know, we were medicating. I was definitely drinking. Uh, I was fighting and doing um, doing MMA with a brain injury. That's probably not That's the always best. good. Yeah, <laughs> less than ideal. Not a doctor, so. <laughs> no. um, but, you know, doing things you probably shouldn't. and. I kind of went, all right, and we went through this, this kind of roller coaster for a couple of years. Um, and then Jenna, my girlfriend and wife, was kind of like, who the fuck are you? Sitting, I think it was on the Sunshine Coast at this stage, or Manifest back here. But sitting there, and it was like, been, you know, um, having a, a bit of a bender, sitting on the couch, and I left my house. I was like, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Like, you were this. Uh, different person where you walked into a room and you know everyone knew you were in there straight away not from you know being loud and boisterous just because I was always confident I was always being able to talk to anyone always being able to express myself um, and she kind of gave me a kick in the ass and then I went you know what there's two things you need in life meaningful engagement and I believe also meaningful employment so then you have meaning in your life and then you have accountability and then you don't go into the rabbit hole that a lot of your friends have gone into. Um, then you start jumping through jobs, ESOs, volunteering. Uh, we did a lot in suicide prevention. I was the uh, Queensland Young Australian of the Year for the stuff I did in suicide prevention. Uh, and kind of yeah, cause that's, and that's one of my biggest, most of my biggest gripes is um, a lot of your, your tall poppy syndrome like fuckheads who cut you down, they're like, what do you have no I am? Mm. Like, uh, do you fucking understand what the dude does on a day, like, on the boards he sits on yeah. and the things he chairs? And they're like, oh, uh, we cut people. Like, I cut people down who were hanging and tried to die by suicide um, throughout a lot of my time at work. And it, you know, it takes it, it. It really bangs, bangs it on. Then I tried to be um, not just a, someone that can help on the ground, but also influence the change. macro level at the change level. Uh, which I was forced enough to do a bit. I've done with DBA, I've implemented things that we've spoken about, um, defence and different ESOs. But yeah, I, we, we, I still get it now. I've had people come up to me and um, they, they don't realise that you don't just wake up one day and go, you know what, I'm going to ring 10 of my mates and go, you should nominate me for this. And then it goes to the Governor General and the Governor General calls everyone or his staff call everyone and then interviews everyone. I'm like, it doesn't work. Like, it, unless you're, 
you, you, you're doing something worthy of, at that level. Yeah, right. You can't just fucking blink three times, click your heels, and, and, and get an award. Open up, you have cornflakes in mind, there's a, a, a pops of fucking OEM. And, and it's shit because then it makes you second guess why you have it. Right? Yeah. So then you're like, well, should I, should I just give it back? Should I not have it? Am I too young? Like I got told, I was too young. To Fuck no, it. mate. Just lets them win there. Um, mm. To be fair, when you went through that employment stuff, we at that time saw a lot of stuff that was getting a lot of money, whether it's state, federal, mm. the community charity dollar that wasn't working. Yeah. It wasn't ever designed for us. Mm. I think that's what maybe drives a little bit of stuff now, but through the employment we did back then, it, it just opened our eyes to what. You're getting a lot of money for stuff that's not working. Well, we got we got paid both around thirty percent less than what we did in the defence force, and that and then you don't have your, your free medical, you don't have your dental, you don't have and that wraparound support that you know about. So you have what jobs did you sort of? So you got out. You had a cover off on some of the jobs. Yeah, yeah. So I, I did a bit of uh, some of the jobs. <laughs> I did a lot, but um, I did first aid training on the Sunshine Coast, um, which was good, but. He never paid my super. Yeah, that's what we failed to pay me on some stages, like just, and I was just like, oh, this just must be the, the world, right? So you got to remember when I got out, I'm not remembering when when I worked previously as a concrete dealer before I got in. I'm only remembering 2009 onwards because a lot of my memory's gone. So it was gone from that far back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I remember like mum, uh, my brother, my sister. Um, couldn't tell you what house I lived in. Couldn't tell you. I don't. I don't speak to anyone that I that I knew previously. Pretty much. Um, I tried to, but it just doesn't click, and we don't just we don't gel because yeah. I don't, I can't remember. And I must be. I don't think I'm different, but it just must be different for them. So I don't. I don't gel with them. So mm. you know, when you went home, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I, I don't. I'm not even fucking know where I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, right? <laughs> still now. Yeah, yeah. Still memory's still the same. Um, we bounced around jobs. I did um, did some stuff here uh, with RSL, trying to help people. But they they weren't at that. They weren't at the, the time to listen yet. So we both and Paul was at uh, an ESO as well, and we wrote up a welfare officer plan. So while there's all this stuff for pensions and advocacy, we wrote a thing for welfare. So when someone comes in to do a claim, yeah, that's cool. But when you can't eat you're living homeless, you're not doing well, you're suicidal, you're doing whatever, that's the welfare side. And there's fucking more of that, right? Everyone thinks, you know, it's all this pension stuff. Man, the, so, the amount of people that would call me and be like, I'm not doing well, or I'm gonna kill myself, or I'm going this way. But I'm not a counselor, so I don't counsel them. I don't give them um, advice, I give them information. So if someone goes, I'm gonna kill myself, or my wife left me, or whatever, I don't say, this is how uh, you get better. I said, this is the places where you can go to get that support. Um, so that was the role. They, they didn't pick it up. I wrote to defence, gave the defence. That's so, so defense. needed, man. Like, I, I learned this firsthand. I won't drop names, but a few months ago, one of the boys was in a bad way. And like, this is the first time that I'd experienced, um, obviously, we're trying to build proactive stuff. This is the first time I'd have to try and do cohort for an urgent reactive situation. And I ranked everyone under the sun in the fucking Refidex and no one had a plan. No one had a plan. Everyone's, yeah. The end state always falls back to, if that person needs help right now, we need him to call. I'm like, you've never been depressed, have you? Because that dude's not fucking picking up the phone. <laughs> He's going out in the bush somewhere and we're never going to see him again. Yeah. And it's it seems like that's the biggest gap. Like The biggest gap is that... An SOP, it doesn't have to be advice, it's an SOP going, if this yeah. happens, that's where you go. Nor are families and children of suicide. What's that? They're not gonna call you. Mm. You need to come up with like, oh, this has happened, this guy's got a wife and kids, mm. all right? Here's my six to eight week care plan that's an initial emergency thing. Mm. We'll help you run the house, we'll help you whatever arrangements need to be made. That yeah. initial point there, especially when there's kids involved, I feel like that's just, even wow. the emergency response, right? Because everyone goes, all right, if it's an actual suicide event is happening right now, call the cops. I, ring the, I, ring, I was in New South Wales at the time, rang the Queensland cops, because um, the dude was up here. And they're like, 
unless he calls us, then there's nothing we can do. And we're, he's not going to call her. These, this is what's happened. This is the pathway that gone, he's gone down. This is like a replicated model for everyone else who's gone all the way to the point of killing himself. Can we not just fucking go and get him now? I don't care what you've got to do. Lock the dude up until he can get some of his mates there and we can get Sykes there and we can try and sort this out the proper way. And they're like, we can't. And it's, and 20, like, it's 2019. Yeah. You know, the, the, the thing that really irks me the worst, and we've had this discussion, we preempted this back in 2009 and 10 and tried to get people to listen and they just, oh, the, the two diggers are just angry or they're just... Yeah. No yeah, so one would listen. The University of New South Wales, I said hundreds of people are going to go through this. If you look up their magazine from 2009 or 10 or whenever I decided to sort of pop out and start talking to the media about it, and I had some, um, some specialists go, yeah, you know, it's just, this, it's not going to be epidemic. Guess what? Well, it You're wrong. Is. Right now it's epidemic. So we preempted this. We are, um, and, and back on to, um, to what you were saying before, that, that the, the catalyst of, of both of our outcomes of where we are today is because of being told no. Being told it can't happen, it won't happen, you're just two diggers. Literally getting told, you're just a digger, what do you know? Well, uh, we do things differently. Lived fucking, we, lived fucking experience. We, we, we both don't take no very well. Um, it, and it's not about, so if someone said, oh, this can't work because of, that's fine. I got told from a, a person who's a director at uh, some organisations um, within the north that uh, I'm too young and uh, you can't just take up the leadership role straight away. You need to do your time. We've waited for the Vietnam veterans to, to get to, to pass the baton over us and then we'll take this up and we'll pass it to you. That's, That's what all I got told. It's, it's what I got told. That, um, <laughs> this person's actually not the RSL, yeah. but I got. But I got. This is what I got told, and I was like, "Well, aren't you part of the problem then? Because why would why shouldn't we all be working together?" I wrote uh, to all the ESOs, nearly all the ESOs in the country, um, previous to, to where I am now, uh, and, and said, "I think you should have a younger um, veterans, wounded engineer people, if that's your charter." to be on your board and if you don't want to put them on your board put them on an advisor but they should sit in the room so then you can grow and develop them and they can give you some insight and i'm and i, I clearly in bold said i'm not looking for a job you can find your your own kind of people um all of them uh by about three wrote back and said we'll just take it into consideration even to the state i haven't done mm -hmm. now so this kind of kind of paved our way when we were just getting pigeonholed everywhere we went through um, departments, through bureaucrats, through ESOs, RSLs, everywhere. And we went, well, there has to be something else we can do. Um, I went uh, and worked in another charity and tried to do things like pigeonholed. Went to the, at the time, the federal member and said, I think in veterans issues we should do this. And I think as a community we should do this. And pretty much got pigeonholed again. No, nah, what would you know? You you're too young, you haven't done this, you got, don't have that, you're just a wounded veteran and go forth, get a pension and argue with people. That's kind of where we got led down. Um, and then that kind of led me to go, well, I hate that our town is stagnant and not going anywhere. High crime, high unemployment, high cost of living, no jobs, not Adani was this dirty word that no one wanted to talk about, even though there's over 200 jobs at the head office here and jobs that will be created and open up the gallery base all these things that to me I was like jeez that just seems like a really e like good project to get behind and no and literally we are getting bullied we were at the stage we are getting bullied we both got into uh, near fights at um, the previous members uh, uh, round tables or, sound like me uh, <laughs> <laughs> because they we were we were we were too young, too injured, to not them. Mm. We were just. I'm forty years old. Yeah, but people like myself, and it, this is a little bit off track. But if the RSL wanted to fix itself, you look at someone like Justin Huggett, MG. Mm. People like us went. We're forty. Um, Huggett's early forties as well. All this hurry, like wait your turn. We're like, no. If I wait my turn, I'm 
the yeah, problem. 50. Yeah, fine, fine. How do I get change? Yeah. We'll support him. I've got to, I've got just, like, I know that there's mass, the RSL was saying to me there's massive drama, but RSL's New South Wales, man. There's changes coming. It has to be, man. And, um, Wait, we, we've been approached. The RCO or no, no, so, the no, no, not at the top level. It, it, like, we'll see what happens when the new CEO comes in. But at the actual individual club level, like, we did some stuff with clubs in New South Wales and they've been wicked with us. And as soon as we got on their radar, bunch of RSLs in Sydney have been in touch going we need to get some young blood in here because we want to love it yeah, want to see it 100% want to, want to see the future of it yeah oh, just yeah, the yeah. of it yeah. 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 show me that don't tell because, me that yeah yeah because we've done this before RSL New South Wales are a big part of why we left but you have to understand I don't know if it's the same in every state man I don't know if it's the same in every state New South Wales the, the clubs clubs New South Wales are the, the business and then the RSL sub branches are the one of the, the charities that the club support. So there's five levels. Yeah. There's the um, sub branch that the veterans go to. There's the um, club, which is the pokies bit in Queensland. So it'd be different names. Yep. Then there's the district who look after the district. So they look after everyone. Yep. Then there's the state and then there's national, right? District, state, national are the, the sub branch angle. The yeah, so the, so this one, the, the club sits in its own spot, yeah. but none of them are bound to each other. So National could sit there and go, everyone has to give $5 a week because we want to raise money for this. And every other sub-branch, every other district, every other state could go, no. Because their constitutions are all different. They're, they're not all the same. It's fucking bullshit because they all have the same logo. They don't talk to each other. Mm. The club, I don't think a club, so the RSL club, which does the pokies and palmies and the piss, should should be called an RSL. And if they are, because the, the advocacy side is separate. I think we've been failed um, in the leadership uh, nationally of the RSL because if it was done correctly, then everyone would... So a national company, everyone reports in the national company. We've got a national body, but none of them actually report in. They can mm-hmm. just bypass and be like, fuck you, we're not doing this. It's rubbish, mate. Yeah. And we've seen it, and we've been doing this for 10 years. So, and when, and I, I sometimes, and I get it like it, I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm really real negative about something. And I try not to because I'm like, oh, but we've been doing it for 10 years. And in 10 years, nothing's changed. Mm. And, and it's been promised a lot over the Yeah, we, we, we would say it wasn't around 10 years ago. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no it wasn't changing. But no shit, like I have, I have to vouch for clubs. You said, like the and club side cool. of it, the yeah, pokies, yeah. palmies, and piss, yeah. they are 100% behind getting young guys in there and, and solving something. See that in well, they've got, mate, as Gosford of RSL's already financially got behind us. There's Koji, he, he wants to almost flip the whole system on its head and go, Let's just fill this Coogee's place. Coogee's more group. progressive, right? They're well, progressive. it is. And, and it's the same. Like, every organisation has... You're not, get, you're not getting towns with RSL. Let's face that. Yeah. Right, oh, there's some... Uh, you know, <laughs> there's some... <laughs> there's good, good, there's good people in every organisation, right? And there's also some dinosaurs. And I think we're going to see, in the next 10 years... I know we'd rather have it happen overnight, but in the next 10 years, we're going to see the progressive clubs yeah. are going to be the ones that survive. The other ones aren't because the, 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 the fact of the matter is if you stick with the dinosaur model, your population ages and is going to disappear and therefore your club's going to go under. Like clubs in New South Wales are going under left, right and centre, the ones that refuse to change. And the ones that are just thriving are the ones that are ready to innovate and, and move What forward. you're on, and I had this conversation with a, with a brigadier friend of ours not long ago, um, I sort of run it past him for his opinion. Mm. You know what? RSL drop the president bullshit it gives these people that have done nothing in defense this big sense of entitlement like here's the grand poobah watch him on anzac day parade around with more medals than hmas toowoomba watch him you know <laughs> if you're the if you have that role <laughs> i'm gonna say it, Send it if you have that role you work for the people like he does it, it puts these oh he's the president I don't give a shit. What you, because you, you know, ordinance 20 years ago or something like that. Like, what have you done in the community to influence others, to help them help themselves to? 100%. The, the that you're allowed, so the thing, the difference with you two work. boys is like, you're allowed to call a spade a spade. And this is a platform if there ever is one. Call a fucking spade a spade. Maybe with Ron Tell, we'll see. 
But the, <laughs> the, but the difference is you're not just coming here going, I'm whinging about this, I've got a problem with this. Got a, you look, you're sitting there going, we're fucking writing solutions. We're just waiting for people to hear them. Yeah. This Outcome, is and that's the difference. The last yeah. 10 years, mate. Output, outcome, impact. Yeah. That's what you should be looking at. Your output is non measurable, your outcomes are measurable, the impact that it measures in your community is another measurable. These are the things that charity should live around. So, yeah, your yeah, output, all right, my, what's my output? How are we doing this that we're not measuring? My outcome, how are we measuring it? And the impact on what we've done to help our community, how do I measure that? So, they're the, they're the things that most charities, all charities, should be harnessing around. Mm. And that, when I remember sitting in these meetings when we were getting chastised, I was getting chastised, so, so we're, what am I, nine years younger than you? About, yeah, nine years. Um, so, two for two. so we're nine years younger than you. Still Australia there. Are you, you're still serving, aren't you? Still Australia. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> um, this is a 10 year process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So come to me and get some time up. And um, <laughs> I'm gonna be, I'm gonna get sippy time up now. Yeah, yeah, well, Fuck me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta start where we started. Thirty yeah. percent less of what you're on now. <laughs> um, but we, we we're getting no. We don't. We both definitely don't get bullied. Oh, we both get bullied. We don't get bullied. Yeah. But we're in a room where we're getting chastised, dressed down. You know, people. You know, knife handing you. Where are you? This. Where? What? I haven't seen you on the street pulling people out of the gutter. I'm like. Really? Oh, really, coach? Because two days ago, I, I, I cut a person down that was hanging. Mm. Two days ago. And that's why you were at home watching Netflix, mm. man. Yeah, yeah, so. well, we, we, you know, we, and, and these things, and we, you know, we, we had a chat oh, after. Sorry, Priscilla Queen. Um, <laughs> this all the time. <laughs> and so we had this chat, and we both were in jobs that we could have done better in. And we didn't, right? I actually tried to get a job with Paul in an ESO, which was a lot less than where I financially a lot less in um, you know the position but because I thought we could do stuff good to grow foster develop and do and they turned me down not because of lack of qualification not because of lack of anything just because of who I was I think I think I don't know it wasn't mm. the interview. Um, who we are who we are yeah because we would have been together thicker than glue um, and then we took all these things to you to the, to the federal member to the state members uh, not just defence issues because there's a lot more in the world than just that but um, we got shot down constantly and then you know we we kind of I, I asked Paul and I asked a few uh, you know both of you actually as well I'm thinking about putting my hand up for running for politics um, instead of throwing stones at bureaucrats because that's where I thought of kind of was um, and lobbing stones at the federal member maybe I could catch a cup and do something and then pre-selected one pre-selection and then it all kind of changes because you it's not exactly what you think you know the you, you can't just uh attack the bureaucrats you, it's different right there, there's a different level um but the member for herbert has a, or any politician has so much influence if they want to use it and unfortunately for us for many many years and including some people that I know, it, it, um, I don't think the influence has been used correctly. Uh, so I, I ran, lucky enough, had a, a lot of support from Labrack, the veteran community, uh, people nationally, internationally. Uh, That's mining, you though. The mining community. Sorry? That's you. But if we look back at this ten, the last 10 years, and I, I don't mean to cut you off. It's okay. But that's from 2013 and, and sort of, you know, being the token wounded veterans to get in and talk to Chief of Army or CDF or whatever. Um, even Invictus 2014, 2016, when you manage my schedule, you know, talking with Prince Harry and George mm. Bush. Your personality is is so different to mine. I'll go to a function, I'll stand at the back of the room because I'm, I'm, I'm not a people person. You'll go, you just walk straight up to them, whoever, regardless of position, title. And, and say your piece and I think that's what politics need that's that's rare to find I think so about uh, so we, we sort of understand where your journey went and, and your story and where you ended up but 
Mike, people sitting there, if they've had references to you having one leg for the last hour, and everyone's was like, who the fuck's this dude? No, it would be pretty right. good about it. I have not said anything about his leg. Okay, maybe I was just thinking it. Just because you okay. looked at I it. I might have been thinking it the whole time. Hey, before we do story time, boys, let me get rid of some of these empties. Oh, yeah. You go the other way. <laughs> you go the other way. Excellent. We can do intermission, can't we? Is it? Yeah. We're not going to stop rolling, so don't start. I was nearly at dropping one, dirty one, words. One last point, and this yeah. came up last week Shut it up, about, to roll. about you and who and and the fact of that fact. You, I've seen you walk up to Prince Harry. I've seen you walk up to be smart about it. You became mates with his head of security, so he always known when he was going to go around and and do all this shit. I said to our regular friend the other day, I'm like. The system and right up to DVA and, and politically needs someone who's smart enough to manage systemic change and be smart enough to think strategically, mm. but be down at ground level enough to have an axe to grind that's been involved in mates going down the dark really path. Really so, you know how hard that is? When you rack your brain, there's not too many people you can think of that, that have you're either down here and angry, or you're up there and, and too far removed from it, and you just think, oh, we should make these, these strategic changes. You need both of those to fix this space. But I think we, because we're all mates, right? I don't think, I've never gone anywhere in the country and thought I'm better than anyone, ever, ever. I've not liked people, but I've never thought I'm better than anyone. And we all bring different things. And I also have, you know, you guys, my wife, um, people that bring me back down to earth if I ever crept away from it. But my job isn't to promote me, it's to represent people and do well for a community, which we all have that want to help people. That's why you're in a charity. That's why you're a fucking ambassador in a charity. That's why you do what you do, you know what I mean? And so we all have this thought of how can we help people? And I'm just doing it in a different space where I love picking a fight. I pick a fight with the Greenies every day of the week uh, or, the, or Labor when they, they stood there and backed um, uh, these people that are gluing themselves to the road in Brisbane. I'll stand there and pick a fight them. It's bullshit. It's rubbish. And they sit there and they yell and they scream and they chastise. But if you don't pick it and you sit down and you sit on your hands and you, you lose your values of who you are. And we've all got this similar values, which is, you know, we always put other people, our family first. Our family's always first. Our brothers are always first. And then, you know, we put the community above our own interest. Otherwise you wouldn't be wearing a Swiss shirt. You wouldn't be wearing your Iron Metal shirt. Yeah, fucking oath, 100%. Yeah, yeah. I think that's got to get, I think that needs to, like Paul was saying, now there's finally someone in politics who actually has lived, breathed and done it. Yeah. And at the level, and been in the mud, and it humbleizes a human being, and knowing who you are, and, and if we can get you keep come, getting back on here, people are going to see you're not a fucking made up personality, and that's why- I'm drinking everyone, beer on a podcast. You know what I mean? Like on a bloody Monday we, morning. On a, on a, <laughs> <laughs> we've, been get, we've been trying to get him going for eight hours. He won't go home. <laughs> you know how many? How many? It's Saturday night. It's, it's Saturday it's, night. Nah, it's, what's the day you have off? Um, <laughs> you know the way I look at it is I look around. I go, how different like, we are. We're the same. But when you walk in a Parliament House, it's a little bit different. You know, having uh, I've got tattoos. I'm drinking beer on a podcast. I, you know, I've sworn on sky. I, I'm not thinking and closing my eyes going, you know, what I, you know what I hope? I hope one day I'll get promoted. No, it's not what I'm thinking. It's how I best represent the people that, who I am mm. in, this, in, in the house. I think you're going to do a fucking good job. I had two fucking suits, mate. I went to Kenwood with two suits. Day one, I got pissed on fucking red wine and spilt it all down my shirt. <laughs> I had one suit for what? nine days. I had to get another one the other week. Two more suits than I've got, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Story time with Wazza. I'll be back to some button. He, he didn't feel that, mate. No, he does. <laughs> because he has osteointegration. Yeah. Why, oh. are you, why are you giving him shit about having one leg for? Because he's probably better than me with two legs. And I get out and be crying and carrying on. He'd be like, you've got both your legs. What's mm. your problem? Like, oh. Uh -huh. I think I've actually said before. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a lot, of, a lot of self doubt when you get in and you're you're in, you get handed a disabled parking permit. You're like, fuck, who am I now? Yeah. <laughs> Is this gonna work? Because because what you went you joined the army later? Hey, like thirty. Um, yeah, it's a good point of difference, you know. Like, and this, Tommy brought it up in one in a meeting we were at with these charities later on. 
um, when suicide and depression and stuff like that, PTSD started to become a really obviously a big issue. Um, ex externally, we all knew it was internally, but he said to me, he Boxing, yeah, and then Australian chair. Um, yeah, luckily enough, um, I think started karate when I was young. Played a lot of footy, not just not, not good at footy. Parents thought uh, he's embarrassing us. We better find something else. Um, yeah, started doing karate. Was about ten years old. Um, worked through to making sort of Australian teams at about 17, 16, no, 16 17. Um, should have been con concentrating on school and stuff and was over in Denmark at world titles and stuff which is pretty cool um, especially coming from a country town like yeah the international airport's a big deal when you're that young let alone <laughs> yeah, some older guys sort of snuck me out and went to a few <laughs> interesting <laughs> places in the middle of Denmark um, good life experience what colour lights were they? Um, <laughs> they're, a, they're a dark shade of red <laughs> But yeah, it was, it was good and I don't know, I say to the, I'm sort of fortunate where I am now, I'll, I'll never, I'll never not think of it that way, I'm, I'm fortunate, I'm just lucky. Um, I say to sort of young guys and girls I talk to, whether it's Cowboys or Soldier Recovery Centre or things like that, um, yeah, you need to chase your own dreams, not someone else's. And I used to read these international kickboxing magazines and that's just what I wanted to do. I got a decent OP and, and I could have went to uni, but um, yeah, I just decided to have to kick people's heads off their shoulders. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Got you kick and try boxing? You know, kicking. Kick Kick me, me, mate. Elbow punch. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Kick yeah. boxing? Yeah. Also, not a doctor. So, so <laughs> about not Thailand? Yeah. Yeah. Thai boxing. Also, never been to Thailand. Mm. I've been to heaps of other countries, mate. Kick, knee, elbow, punch, mate. All the all the stuff the footy players cry about. We're about to do. We're we're allowed to do legally. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, there's no one to pass the ball to when you get tired. It's just you. That's a good one. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the truth, mate. Fighting is the truth. If you haven't done the running, if you haven't done the work, if you haven't cut corners, cutting weight, your diet hasn't been good. If you've been going out, you will get found out. It's the truth. You can't pass it to someone faster. You can't. Throw it to a forward, it's on you. Nothing worse than being technically better and you're just a little bit lazy in the lead up and he's fitter than you. That's good. Because that's what we were talking about that before. Like when they, they talk about footy players, is, and I, I love watching footy, they're some of them hard dudes, they talk about all the time, they call them modern day gladiators. I'm like, no, 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 mate. Yeah, I'm not sure. One of them gladiators, I've played on the two-way range before, I didn't see any of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At no yeah. point in a fight was I allowed to sit on the bench and just say, yeah. nah, just suck us off, boss. <laughs> time, yeah, time, yeah. the ball's gone out. Yeah. Ah, you're just getting whacked the whole time. Like It's it's a it's a different kettle of fish. Yeah. I was never good at footy, and, I'm, and I'm, like you said, I like watching footy. Like, um, you like watching Gallo. Yeah, except for today. <laughs> well, mate, I, I love playing footy and watching it, but, but that was 100%. I, and when I was running out on the footy field, I used to think I was the biggest hardest dude ever. As soon as I get gas, I'm like, I'm just going to hide behind the rack for a bit. He's going to miss it a bit. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to sit on the wing for a bit. So try and score some tries. At that point, when you do that... That's when I'm going to get kicked off in fight. The other guy goes, I know, I've just seen ah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Two or three times. It's like a lazy fight. dude overseas in a gunfight, mate. He said that and he's like... Stands up and walks and like, 40 oh, I'm a 40 wing fighter. Yeah, true. That, that, I, I'm really grateful for for that sport and that career to have 10 years in that. Mm. I sort of won, yeah, a couple of coins there, titles, and then went, sort of had a good two or three year run where I went undefeated and got a chance at an Aussie title, I think. Uh, yeah, won that one in 30 kilos ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but sometimes, yeah, the resilience you learn, like, cutting what year? weight. What year did you win your Aussie title? Uh, the second one was 06, so I probably had the first one in 05. 
I was close to getting the three. I was trying to get like the three major belts out of the, uh, as a super middleweight at the time, but yeah. and sometimes because this is a good one. I don't want this is. I'm fucking sending it. Uh, so we got back from a we're in a pub and we, there was an altercation, and uh, I wasn't there. No, you weren't there. You're telling me sorry. You were there. Paul was there, and uh, I remember there was an altercation at a certain someone, and they decided to, it was one of the boys' ex girlfriends, and we were blowing kisses to him. Ex boyfriend, ex girlfriend, oh, ex girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, it's a girl, and I ended up giving her. You know, she was with a group of dudes, 12, 13 dudes, and I was, we was standing with a couple of handy guys, and I was the least handy of the lot, but also the one who was shit stirring everything. Standards <laughs> generally the case. Standards, standards, standards. The crowd's gonna be run starting fights, mate. And there was other people there. We wouldn't have to name them, but there's like, uh, yeah. And uh, anyway, kicks off. My ambitions and capability vastly different. <laughs> And next thing you know, I've got this hand wrapped around my neck and this guy is lining me up to kill me in Cactus Jacks. And all I saw was this fist from God come reaching over my shoulder and just put this guy asleep, mate. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Paul Warren. And Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. I don't could have been other amputees in the building. <laughs> <now. laughs> Got my ass so boy. Well, this is post overseas. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I may have had a few beers with the boys that day and then yeah. proceeded to lift my jeans up and tell the guy, um, you should ring your friends because you just been bash boy to save the boots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, I thought you were going to say you're going to kick him in the head. <laughs> no, I just, just rubbed his face in it. <laughs> but I didn't start it. I just. Yeah. You know, I, didn't, I, I didn't start it. I was just. Or whatever I started it, doesn't matter, fuck you. Too much ass for what I see these days. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, see, so Tommy raised a really good point, and he, yeah, he raised, I remember the meeting still, he raised it, and if I didn't have that, that sort of resilience and that background, um, and, and I went overseas as an 18-year-old, which we were sending a lot of troops over, I was, I was the granddad of the group, man. Keats is was my best mate going through. We went to Kapuka and stuff together. I was 27 when I joined. Um, I fractured my shin in 06 and that was it. I didn't, I didn't fight ever again. Um, yeah, sort of thought what was next. So I, I already knew who I was. That's, I think that's the big difference. The army didn't shape me. Mm. I already had values and stuff like that. I had, and I knew that I had to have something in front of me um, keep setting goals or I'll get lazy and I'm still that way now. We still have those chats now. Tommy's like, what's next? What do you do? What course are you doing? When are you gonna do company directors? When are you gonna do this? Like and yeah, it's it's gotta be part of your life and the habits you create and I think. Goal setting, hundred percent yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. It come, but it comes back to everything. The way you wake up, what you eat, what you do during the day, how you relax, how you unwind, how you spend time with your family, what you have for dinner time you go to bed what your plans are and then it starts again like if you don't have your goals you don't have a functioning work life balance with your family life you fail like Paul's very quick to go bam no spend time with family okay cool I, I'll ring him up okay, what are you up to oh, what are you up to There's, I'm going to the gym not because he wants to because he has to right because it, it, it releases the endorphins, he's happy, he needs to, it's the part of uh, the functioning way of his life. And then, okay, goals are all set. Without these plans, we all just sit there, you know, on our hands and make mistakes and don't have the plan. Like, if you can't see, visualize what you want to do, then you, he doesn't become a manager in a very, very large defense uh, uh, industry organization. No, like so, like I was saying, uh, I think we're we're close to probably time now, but uh, I just want to say uh, no shit. I, I wanted to introduce us. We decided to do something slightly different, and uh, I'll do the introductions after this, so we can we can wrap it in. But sure. I just wanted to say, uh, a, as a guy uh, in the army, having you to look up to and the, the dramas you went through, and I know you don't make sure that it it doesn't define you as a person. You move past that. And we keep bringing it up, but only to give it respect, like perspective to the people at home. Uh, and uh, two times Australian kick, like Thai kickboxing, and what you've gone through and come out of, and the person you are, you're a fucking hero to me, mate. And same Tomo, what you've done, you've always been there for us, mate. And and 
we will back you to the end. No, no matter what time of day is it, you've always been there to answer phone calls and help people. Uh, and uh, MP, OAM, whichever way it's supposed to go, mate. Uh, you're, you're a fucking legend, mate. So mate. thanks for coming on and uh, that's it. Thank you uh, for having us. And I think that it's a great uh, charity that people should get behind. Uh, and if they want to ask questions, they should just reach out because this is something that doesn't matter if you serve one day, a hundred days or no days. It's a charity that is uh, prepares you for mental well-being. It, it helps you in your life. And I think that the country uh, would be better off with charities like yours. Cheers. It's your time the answer came from within. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah. Yep. Well, see. Now we'll do the intro. Now we'll do the intro after a beer.